Since my channel is now officially one year old, I've been doing quite a bit of reflecting. And the deeper in thought I fall, the faster it seems life keeps passing me by. At the end of Star Trek Generations, Picard says that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey, reminds us to cherish every moment because he'll never come again. While we can always try to write off video games as just video games, the ones we love and connect with can also be seen as companions who stuck with us at certain points in our lives. In our own each unique ways, we tend to break up our lives into a series of fleeting moments and phases that we'll never truly be able to experience again. These moments leave us just as quickly as they came, and what's left are only their memories. No matter how hard we try to hold on to them, we can never go back. I wish I could stay in this moment forever. But then it wouldn't be a moment. Time is always ticking, and it never stops for anyone. No matter how tired or down we might be, it carries on. In some ways, this can be seen as harsh and cruel. In another way, it can be seen as tough love. Otherwise, we might become complacent and never learn to grow, much like the washed up high school jock who never truly moved on and reruns all become their history. Video games work a lot in the same way. There's nothing quite like the first time experiencing a new game. If it has a deep and rich story that we replay multiple times, the twists and turns eventually no longer have the same effect on us. And with online games, we soon discover that our old partners in crime move on in time. We all have to say goodbye eventually, no matter how much love we may have for the games we grew up with. The first video game I can remember playing and replaying over and over again was Mega Man X on the Super Nintendo. For a little kid with no real experience playing video games, it might as well have been like Dark Souls. I can pass the opening stage with no problem, but all the missions after that were nearly impossible. This was back in the before times when YouTube and video tutorials had yet to become a thing. I died no matter what, until I noticed how close I tended to come to defeating the chill penguin. So I kept trying until I memorized all of the penguin's moves. I literally jumped out of my seat in excitement when I finally beat him for the first time. Soon after that, it became a puzzle of figuring out which elements best matched up against which boss. I think one of the reasons why I picked up the game in the first place was because I had been a fan of the Mega Man cartoon show back in the 90s, and my mind was completely blown away when I realized that I had already been introduced to X a year earlier when he appeared in an episode. And even then, I vividly remember it being my favorite episode of the entire show. It made me want more, and I hope that they would one day make a sequel cartoon show dedicated to Mega Man X. Mega Man X was the first game that I absolutely loved. I can play it all day trying to pass the Sigma stages while listening to its amazing soundtrack. And then I would challenge myself to see how fast I could complete the game from start to finish. And then I moved on. I don't exactly remember there being a day when I said I'm done or anything. It was just that my time with the game had passed. I did return to the game some 15 years later when I found a used copy of the Mega Man X collection and the game was exactly as I had remembered it. Perfect. It was great to revisit such a beloved game from my early childhood. But I couldn't experience it exactly as it did before. I already knew how to beat the bosses, and some of the more challenging bits of the game mostly came down to me trying to recall the muscle memory for the controls and getting down my reaction times properly. There were other games that I loved in the years that followed, such as the PS2 Gundam games. Although, had I not been such a huge Gundam fan, I admit that I may not have put up with the multiple flaws that those games had. There were, of course, all the Grand Theft Auto games as well, with San Andreas being the one that I spent the most time with prior to GTA V. However, I only ever played through their stories once, and then I just played around the maps after. It wasn't until I got my hands on Ace Combat 4 that I found another game that I can play and replay over and over again. Ace Combat 4, 5, and 0 are true underrated works of art. I replayed all of them multiple times, making sure to beat their campaigns in every difficulty, along with getting all the different skins for the planes and medals. Of the three, I'd have to say that Ace Combat 4 is hands down my favorite. It was my first exposure to the series, and I can't forget the first time playing the mission where I had to destroy an entire naval fleet, or the mission where I had to destroy Stonehenge after having previously only been able to avoid its attacks, and then there were the fights with Yellow Squadron, not to mention the final mission where I had to destroy Megalith from the inside. To top it all off, I had never played a game where the story didn't revolve around your character. All the cutscenes were told from the perspective of a boy refugee, an orphan refugee who followed around your main rival for the game. I could not get enough of this game, and for a few years, it became tradition to play the entire game during winter break, either during Christmas or New Year's. And then, just like with Mega Man X, I moved on. I definitely have played the later games in the series, such as Ace Combat 6 and 7, along with the Black Sheep of the Family Assault Horizon. As much fun as I still had with the later games, as well as the times I returned to 4, 5, and 0, nothing really compares to the early days of playing the games. Especially with 4, since for me, it was the first time I was exposed to the usual elements that make up an Ace Combat game. 
They usually start off with a surprise attack by the villains. There's a super weapon you can't fight in the beginning and you can only avoid its attacks. The super weapon gets destroyed. You then complete the game and realize that there's an extra final mission with another super weapon that requires you to fly through a narrow tunnel to destroy it. The only slightly different one is Ace Combat 5, which only slightly rearranges the missions at the end. So as much fun as I had with the series, there has yet to be a game in the series that can bring me back to the same level of heights as Ace Combat 4. Not long after, as I was finishing up high school, there wasn't a game that had made me fall in love with it as the previous ones I have just mentioned. I did get into some of the online games, such as the Halo games from Bungie and the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare trilogy, and I greatly enjoyed my time playing with my friends. For a moment, however, it seemed that my time in video games was done. Until my brother got me a copy for Mass Effect 1 for Christmas. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible because I absolutely love the Mass Effect trilogy. I can make this entire video about just Mass Effect alone. I've even played around with the idea of making a YouTube channel talking primarily about Mass Effect. This trilogy is what brought me back to playing video games. And I don't know if I can properly explain just what it all means to me. There are so many moments throughout the three games that I can talk about. The opening of the very first game shows you Commander Shepard and the Normandy leaving the Earth and the solar system to literally and metaphorically explain to the audience that we're going on one hell of an adventure, far, far away from home. I can never forget the first time learning the truth about Sovereign and the Reapers. That brief conversation with Sovereign sent chills down my spine, and in terms of presentation, came across as far more terrifying than Harpinger ever did. I had never experienced something like Mass Effect, and once I finished the campaign, I felt I had to tell someone about it, because nothing was the same anymore. No one I knew had played or even heard of it before. So I almost felt exactly like Commander Shepard trying to warn everyone about the Reapers by trying to explain to them that such a game actually existed. I still remember going out with this girl at the time who didn't play many video games and still talking about the ending of the first game with her. To my surprise, we entered a fun debate whether saving the council was the right thing to do. Even seeing the first trailer for Mass Effect 2 was an experience on its own because prior to the announcement, I had no way of knowing if Bioware would ever make a sequel. I was the most hyped I had ever been for a game or film or TV show. I was at the edge of my seat during the entire suicide mission because I was worried if any of my squadmates wouldn't make it out alive. And the final shot of the Reaper Armada approaching the Milky Way has to be one of the most iconic shots in all of video game history. When it came time for Mass Effect 3, it literally felt like the world was ending one way or another. It was the last of the series, and to have been following along since the beginning was a rare and unique experience that I'll never forget. The game was so close to perfection, but I won't get into the ending for this video. Regardless, the Mass Effect trilogy did something that no other game has done since, by carrying over your save progress across all three games. And I also played countless hours online with friends, the same friends I talked to when I finished the first game. But yet again, at some point, I had to move on. After replaying each game over and over again, I carried on with life. This was perhaps the hardest goodbye because it meant so much to me. And even though I didn't play it for so long, I still thought about it a lot. I'd even jokingly compare my friends to Garrus and would ask them, Why can't you be more like Garrus? There's only so much fight in a person. Before your friend picks you up, dusts you off, and tells you you're the best damn soldier he's ever met. James told me there's an old saying here on Earth. May you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Not sure if Torian heaven is the same as yours, but if this thing goes sideways and we both end up there, meet me at the bar. I'm buying. More than 10 years would pass before I would pick up the game again with the Legendary Edition, and it was just as I remembered it. It was like seeing an old friend who I hadn't seen for a long time. The only difference was the feeling. As much as I wanted to reconnect with the game on the same level as the first time, there just seemed to be a limit. I couldn't recapture that same feeling anymore. There really hasn't been anything on such a level ever since. Sure, there's a long list of games that came along after that I really enjoyed. None that I can say that I was deeply invested in. Did I have fun? Yes, of course. But they were easy to move on from. 
Maybe the next game that I connected with was The First Life is Strange. I kid you not, my best friend from college was basically Max Caulfield from Life is Strange. Her mannerisms, her train of thought, even her interests were all just like Max's. Just replace photography with writing, and they were basically the exact same person. My college town was also a little bit like the town of Arcadia Bay from the game. And who didn't wish for time traveling powers like Max's back when they were in school? Any moment of embarrassment could just be erased with a simple rewind. Anytime we guessed incorrectly at an answer in school, we could just try again for the first time. Anytime we accidentally said the wrong thing to someone, we can just restart the conversation. There is a scene in the fifth episode of Life is Strange where Max walks around a photo gallery. Among the photos being shown is one of her own. Her internal dialogue is of coming to terms with the reality that one of her works is finally up on display for others to see in person. I was nearing the end of my time in college, and I myself was dealing with imposter syndrome when some fellow students and professors talked to me about my work. I remember walking around the map in game and getting this strong burning sensation in my chest and in the pit of my stomach, telling me that that's what I wanted. That feeling of being a creator, an artist, creating your own work and showing it off. That's when I felt a real connection with the game. I replayed the game some years after graduating college. And while the feeling was not exactly the same, there was a strong sense of nostalgia. Even though the story follows Max in high school, for me it reminds me of college and of my old best friend. I did play the prequel before The Storm and Life is Strange 2 later on, neither of which hit the same marks for me. And so, it was another game that I eventually moved on from. After Life is Strange, there really hasn't been any game that I've played over and over again. Work started to get in the way of things, and I often came home tired. So I got into free to play games like World of Tanks to turn my brain off. Later came Warframe for about 2 solid years until I finally reached the end game by completing my Warframe's fashion look, and I had grown tired of the constant grind. If you've been following me for a while now, then you know that eventually came Gundam Battle Operation 2. In terms of its gameplay and mechanics, it's pretty much how I imagine a Gundam game should be like. At least for someone like me, if only it had a real story campaign. I'm aware of the old Dynasty Warrior games, along with the Breaker and Versus series, none of which really appealed to me in terms of gameplay. I actually hadn't really gotten into any Gundam games since the PlayStation 2 era. Gundam has long since been my favorite anime franchise of all time. Like many here in the US who grew up around the same time, it started off with Gundam Wing on Toonami. From there, I watched the original Mobile Suit Gundam show and fell in love instantly. Soon after came all the OVAs that were shown on Adult Swim. So when I saw that GPL2 was exclusive to the Universal Century, and add the fact that it was free to play, and I jumped right in on basically the first day at launch in the US. And so I learned the ins and outs of the game. Back then there were no Mobile Suits above 500, and there were no real crazy suits with a ton of skills you either needed to learn or worry about. At first the meta was pretty simple. Pick a rocket launcher or bazooka and then knock down your opponent. In time, I developed my own personal playstyle that differed from most other players at the time. Eventually, I became drawn to the Alex, my personal favorite, and discovered it was the Gundam that best fit my playstyle. In fact, after GPL2, I think it's fair to say that the Alex has become one of my favorites, if not my number one favorite Gundam across the franchise. Don't get me wrong, I love the new Gundam, the GM Sniper 2, Wing Zero, and the Tall Geese, among others. But having spent so much time playing with the Alex, I just have more of a connection with it. Despite the many issues of the game, it is the closest a console game has come to making me feel like an actual Gundam pilot. Years later, I started a YouTube channel focused on the game itself, even after it was dead last on my list of possible content to cover on my channel. And to be honest, the only reason why it even made it on the list was because I had been playing it for so long, and I just wanted to fill the last line of the page with one more random idea. And yet, not long after, GPO2 just kept climbing up on the list. As a result, well, here we are now. Which finally brings me to the main reason why I made this video. I've been with the game since it launched here in the US. I was there when they first added 500 cost mobile suits and above. I was there when the new Gundam was finally added to the game. I played enough to the point where the individual meta doesn't apply to me, and I can consistently use machine guns and still perform well in matches. I'm not sure that I can say it stacks up right there alongside the other games that I've mentioned in this video, but it is nonetheless the game that I stuck with during COVID. This game has helped me get over 1,300 subscribers in under a year. And keep in mind that this is a tiny community. I knew that when starting this channel, which is why it was dead last on the list of ideas for content creation. And now, I feel that my time has come to move on. I feel that I've done all I can, both in-game and with video content for it. I thought about milking content for the game a little more, 
with the new video format that I've been experimenting with on some of my unreleased videos and just rinse and repeat. But to be honest, I'm just not feeling it anymore. At the same time, I admit that I've been feeling as if my performance in the game has declined over the past few months. This is largely because I just haven't been playing the game as much. I've been playing other games and been thinking about branching out. I also confess that the game doesn't feel the same anymore. 200 cost matches, for example, have practically gone extinct. Some of the maps I used to like are no longer in rotation, and they haven't been for years now. And there's still no co-op horde mode. Not that BB Studios has ever said that they would do horde mode. I'm just saying that it would be a nice addition. There are also, of course, a host of issues that continue to hinder the game that I have chosen not to get into because I don't want to turn this into a rant. If this happens to be the last time I shine a spotlight on GPL2, then I don't want it to be seen as a negative one. Regardless of what issues I may have with either side, the reality is that it's time for me to move on. This has not been an easy decision to make. I've of course looked at other channels when they've attempted to change content. It's not easy and it can be really scary. Some try for just one video and when it bombs, they go right back to doing their old content. And while I sometimes go back and forth debating if I should do just one more video or a couple of more on GPL2, I think that's me being scared to leave the nest. Even while writing the script to this video, the Jim Quell and Zeta Plus C1 both recently got buffs. Two mobile suits I made videos about, and the buffs they received were pretty close to what I suggested in my videos. Not that I'm trying to take credit, I'm pretty sure BB Studios doesn't even know my channel exists anyway. But I think I can say with full confidence that I'm the only content creator who talked about these buffs on YouTube. So I was tempted to do some videos on both suits, but that would just be going against my decision to move on. I also still have a list of mobile suits that I wanted to talk about and make videos for. But again, they would just be a way to keep me safe in the nest. And so here I am again with the realization that it's time to move on to other content. This channel will still largely be a gaming channel. I may touch on some other topics outside of video games, as I've done in the past. And I will still be hanging around the community. Because hey, I'll always remember where I came from. For anything else, I do plan to start a second channel. I'm not sure if I'll keep saying this in my future videos, so I'll say it here as possibly the last time. Mobile Suit K9, signing off.